we go. Everything's rolling. Boom. Kind of want to get both of your guys' story. I know, Eric, you weren't you born in, you were born in Alaska. No? <laughs> That's what Wikipedia That's what Wikipedia says. said. That's awesome. No, I was born in Long Beach. Were you really? Yeah. Okay, well, somebody needs to update your yeah. Wikipedia page because <laughs> it says you were born in some port of like Alaska, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Right. <laughs> All right, well, so much for that I research. Went to Alaska once, and it wasn't when I was a kid. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and you, you were born in Fremont, not you moved oh, to Fremont. Hayward, yeah, Hayward. I was born Hayward, and then moved okay, to I knew Bay Area. Yeah. So how did you how did you originally get into music, Eric? Uh, my dad was a drummer. Oh, really? Yeah. And w- was he like a touring drummer? He just he yeah. He he used to. He had a long, really cool story. Actually, in the depression, he was he took a cruise ship to Shanghai, and then he played in the orchestra uh, Philharmonic in uh, Shanghai Philharmonic. Uh huh. And then when the Second World War was coming, uh, he joined the Coast Guard band. Okay. And then he ended up in um, he ended up in. Los Angeles, and he was a uh, well. He was touring after that with a band called um, Who's that called? <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, I can't remember, man. Anyway, he was touring with the band. <laughs> yeah. He's touring, and then um, and then he he joined the uh, Long Beach Municipal Band when when he came when he met my my mom in Long Beach. He was playing a night gig and. Terminal Island, and uh, so he started doing drum lessons and all that. And, uh, and I came along, and and I had the jazz station on all the time at my house, and uh-huh. so I wasn't in, into it at first. But then, uh, you know, it's in my blood. Yeah. So, yeah, my dad handed me a trumpet and said that it's for us to carry around. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to do that. So. <laughs> So yeah, I start, I picked up a bass and um, started playing, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Rome? How did you get into music originally? Uh, I started with guitar. Okay. Yeah, I actually um, I heard a Sublime song, and um, well, I heard the, the self-titled album, and then I, I was like, this was the summer of uh, fourth grade, and then. When I started school the next year for fifth grade, I asked my uh, parents if I could get an electric. My dad had an electric in the in the garage because he was in the band as well. Okay. Um, he played drums. Um, wasn't very good though, but it's all good. It's all about the heart. <laughs> um, but it was cool because we had music in the house, and then you know when I found some music that I just really loved, it just uh, it kind of grew from there. You know, mm-hmm. I, I got really into playing guitar, and then. Um, uh, I, I wanted to learn how to like you know play bass and then you know our house was like the jam house uh-huh. so we had all the instruments in the garage so me and my brother would just get lost in the garage and just play drums we had turntables and a keyboard wow so we would just take turns messing around on stuff um and then eventually yeah i, I just got really into like uh, recording uh-huh. like all the music i was making and and then I had like my first heartbreak, and then I started like like writing songs. Really writing? Yeah, that's when I was like, I need to sing. <laughs> and then, yeah, it just kind of grew from there. So you kind of grew up. The first like record you really were into was the self titled Sublime album. Yeah, um, that was like the first music that I, yeah, I was really into. That's, like you know, that I wanted to like. Yeah, you know, I liked other shit that my parents were playing. Uh huh. But that was like you know like my first you know thing that I was like mine you know yeah yeah do you remember the first uh like songs and stuff you were learning on guitar yeah i was like wrong way and johnny butt oh really yeah, wrong way i thought wrong way was tight because it's like it's like an endless figure sure a uh, music figure there's no like cop uh like verse course verse course uh-huh. it's like it's like a long music figure <laughs> yeah so. What if, Were your parents into music too? Is that why you had like a garage full of instruments? Yeah, my dad played drums. You know, he he just met some friends, and they wanted to start a band. And my dad is like, "I'll learn how to play drums." So, mm-hmm. you know, um, and they all brought over all their instruments to my dad's house because my dad's the only guy who had a house, and you know, oh. they were like in their twenties, and my dad was like in his thirties. Um, but yeah, so like jam, the jamming was always at my house. But we don't really come from like musicians, like my family. Mm-hmm. Um, I know my my uh, great like uncle or like my grandma's my grandma's brother or something like that. 
Um, he was like a famous Mexican singer. Wow. wow that's but cool. I don't really know anything about that. <laughs> uh, Eric, do you remember playing like playing in front of people for the first time? Um, yeah, I was, we were playing backyard parties and stuff and and on the beach in Mexico. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Rum, did, how did you cl- uh, connect then with, with Eric? I started working at a studio that... Uh, I, I started working at a recording studio that uh, Eric was like always recording at. He, uh, he was in a band at the time with <coughs> the dude who owned the studio. Okay. And then um, Stonewing. Stonewing, that's right. <laughs> and um, and yeah, so I, I met Eric through like him just coming by and like hang out. I think you'd like buy weed off Louie or something too. So, but <laughs> yeah, it was cool. It was like, you know, it, yeah, everything just happened really like organically sure like, kind of crazy how is that like i mean you know meeting like somebody that you looked up to was that kind of a trip like you like yeah Eric walks in and you're like totally. oh my god i mean <laughs> totally I, like the first time i was there like your bass was there in the corner and i was like that's tight i took a picture of it and sent it to my friends <laughs> but like you know my my thing is like i don't like to bug anybody you know and yeah. like um you know i'm i'm sure like you know, he's bugged all the time, for, you know, for sublime shit. So I just kept it pretty mm-hmm. chill, you know. Yeah, I was like, of course. Pretty low key about my like super <laughs> fandom as much as it could be anyway. Yeah. But, and even like you know, as we were kind of getting to know each other more, just jamming and shit. Like I was never like, yo, do you want to play forty ounce freedom or like? Yeah, it's just you know, just jam whatever we want to jam, you know. Mm-hmm. And then when when was it that you guys decided to kind of you know restart with Sublime and do Sublime with Rome? Um, I think two two thousand and eight. That was when were you guys just jamming, like you you two were jamming just Sublime songs together, or like how we, did we that were jamming kinda... his parties. Um, oh, okay, yeah, and we we would jam like, uh, just like you know random like just like punk songs or mm-hmm. like or reggae songs and stuff, and then, um, and then, like one day, uh, him and our like soon to be manager like, they had like you know called me up and were like. You be interested in starting in or in uh joining sublime and going around the world and shit and i was like yeah. whoa first i thought it was like a joke or something <laughs> it's a mean joke but nah like it was for real you yeah know? so but it was it was like a really it happened so fast everything um because in the next thing you know we were like in tour buses like just going on my first tour ever yeah. so it was like it was crazy you know i'd never really been on an airplane or nothing um prior to being in the band and then really we were like flying to all these places so it was like it's a bit of a culture shock but it was badass yeah did the did eric and them kind of take you under their wing as far as like the touring aspect goes i mean it's just like when you're out there you know nobody really is like hey this is how you do it kid like (laughs) you just gotta fucking like figure it out you know it's like you know um and learn from other people Mm -hmm. that was like kind of my thing you know because um, you could you could do whatever you want. That's the thing. There's like no rules, you know. Yeah. And you can just kind of like you can make your own schedule. You can party as hard as you want to or whatever, you know. So it really takes a lot of like um, just learning from other people and then like adjusting shit along the way, you know. Yeah. So that was your your first experience touring was with, with yeah Sublime on Throne. on a major yeah totally. Yeah. I I went on a tour with Dirty Heads a couple of times, but wow. yeah that was like in the van, you know, just going around the country like playing in front of like eight people <laughs> but this was much cooler <laughs> but then you, you co-wrote that huge hit with yeah that was ads. rad that was that popped off before we even played our first show at smoke out really so which was kind of cool because so you were already working with account. yeah you're already working with the dirty heads before you guys mm-hmm. even played the smoke out with yeah. sublime we have the same managers oh okay yeah so and we were kind of around each other at the same time and they were kind of just getting going um well not getting going but starting to kind of Mm-hmm. Get yeah, going, get really. You know? I met Cheese. He was developing. Oh, through the Dirty Heads? The Dirty Heads at that studio. That's right, over oh. at Louis Spot. Where's yep. the studio? Is that in Long Coast Beach? Costa Mesa. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Very nice. Yeah, that's where we all kind of linked kinda, up. Yeah. How'd you get down there from Northern California? Um, well, I wanted to become an audio engineer first and kind of get to know some people, make some connections in LA, and then eventually get a record deal that was like my plan sure um so i wanted to uh go and study like audio engineering down in la like mm-hmm. i already knew a grip of it but i wanted to i just really wanted to meet like make some connections you know mm-hmm. so i went down there and um 
And then I realized that that was not a good thing to do. So, <laughs> but at the same time, I did meet the people you yeah. know, who led me to like meeting Eric. So, sure. you know, I can't really say anything bad about that. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I just saved up some dough for a year and then found a couch that I rented for 500 bucks. A month. Um, oh, that's still expensive. Yeah, yeah. for a couch. <laughs> I was off Hollywood Boulevard. And, oh. And uh, yeah, and then I just was like, okay, I guess I'm Mr. Fucking LA guy now. I gotta yeah. meet some people and shit, you know? Sure. And, yeah, it was none of those people that I thought that I should be meeting ended up doing anything, you know, yeah. like for, you know, in um, progression in my life mm-hmm. or in theirs, really. It was it's just like the least like expected people, I guess. Yeah. And Eric, for you, I mean, you were in Long Beach and you were just jamming. Like, ever since I got together with Brad, we were we were playing shows, uh, uh-huh. like in Long Beach, a lot of people. And then we did a tour to to Florida and and to nobody, pretty much. And really? We, you know, we had to pretty much figure out how to get to the next town with with you know hardly any money. And uh, but then the second time we came through there, like. There'd be more people and and then more people and and finally the record companies like they, they uh, signed us because they, we were like doing it on our own. And yeah. They're not too stoked about that. But <laughs> how how was the like was that your first tour that you, when you guys went to Florida? You said across. That the, was our first major. That way, yeah, we we never made it to New York, but we went to Florida. And, were there some shows in there where like you drive? Because I mean back then it was. It was a different time period. So, were there times where you'd like your plan of oh, your yeah, dates and you'd show up or totally get canceled? Or was that a, was there a lot of that going yeah, on? I remember, like in New Mexico, we were supposed to play a gig that got canceled. And I'm driving with the the promoter, and he th- drives by this dealership, and he throws a fucking like, battery through their front window. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what was that for? <laughs> He's like, oh, that's some other. <laughs> I don't remember. We're supposed to be playing a gig that night, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't even know how we got out of that one, but um, but yeah, like a different show. We we go into it like to a town where we don't have any any gig there, and we go into a pizza place that that uh, has live music, and we go, yeah, we're the band for tonight. And they're like, um, there's no band for tonight. Like, well, there's got to be some misunderstanding. Right? Yeah. Can you uh, just give us some? You know, let us play, and we'll some beer, mu- beer, food, and some money for for gas. And, yeah, and we talked them into it, and we do stuff like that to get through. You know, that's amazing. Innovation. Yeah. Yeah, t- totally. When when you joined Rome with with Sublime, was was that kind of like like how were you worried how people would react to that? Like how did how did you take that in? You know um, what I mean? Like there's the people that are just the diehard Sublime fans from yeah. you know early on, and then you gotta you gotta be the guy. I mean, you are the guy. And was that a weird place for you to be in? Well, for me, like, okay, so for musicians, period. Like, um, you're already told like you're fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you shouldn't do this. It's a waste of your time. Um, you're not good enough, you know, because you're really not. Like, there's always someone so much better than you. Yeah. That's one thing that I learned with moving to L.A. I was like, fuck, well, there, there goes being the best guitar player out the window <laughs> or the best singer or the best songwriter. It's like, so my whole thing was like, I've always kind of been used to that, like. Just um, being you're judged. You're not good enough. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, kind sure. of shit. So my thing was like. I, I honestly I can say that I never really thought about any of the public perception. It was strictly just these guys and like friends and family. Uh-huh. Like the people whose influence have always been just weighed greatly on me, you know? Yeah. Um because yeah, like if if, if I was making them happy then, then I then who really cares about people who I, I like I don't have really a say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I don't have like a they don't have like a direct in impact on my happiness yeah and you were already but being accepted do, by you know the, I mean? the, yeah. the the members of the yeah band, you know so that I mean? was kind of like i mean that, that was my like kind of whole you know mentality that's that's still my mentality for anything sure you know? 
I mean, I have a TikTok. People make fun of me about oh, that. Oh, that's yeah. dope, dude. Our it's son like, loves TikTok. I just do whatever TikTok. the fuck I want to do, you know? And hopefully I'm not pissing anyone off along the way. It's kind of like the whole our thing. <laughs> <laughs> so TikTok, though, that's cool. Yeah, that's no, cool. You know, I it, just mess around with all kinds of shit. I like connecting with fans, so whatever way that I can, like, communicate with new ones is always fun. That's awesome. We'll have to have yeah. Robert find you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. He'll, you'll have a new follower definitely today, for <laughs> yes. sure. Um, you know, with three, rec- you have three records out with Sublime yeah. with Rome. You just put out our last one, Blessings. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so now when you guys play sets, how many how many su- of the, the older Sublime songs are you playing? Or are you playing mostly just Sublime with Rome? It's like thirds. Thirds. Like, yeah. That, that's like kind of how we try and break it up. Like, yeah. Because Sublime has like an hour of just fucking hit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like tonight, we have an hour, and we can easily go through an hour of just songs that everybody's heard on the radio. Yeah, a million you know? times. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> but then that, that does a disservice to like the fans who are like diehard, who know like some of the cuts. Yeah, yeah. sirens you know? and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. And then there are people who want to listen to the like last three records that we uh-huh. made. So, like, like, the best way to kind of appease everybody and, and ourselves creatively is kind of like the rule of thirds. Sure, yeah. yeah. Like, we try and just keep it hits, classics, and then, like, some, you know, new shit. That's cool. That's like really it. awesome. <laughs> Do you have any advice? I want to hear from both of you if, if that's okay. Yeah. Do you have any advice for aspiring artists, like, people trying to cut their teeth in this in this industry? Um, just start. I know that sounds really mundane, but you, you, you have to start. Like, you mm-hmm. can spend forever, like... Plotting, especially now with the internet, you can spend forever, like, you know, aligning everything and looking for a manager and trying to get contacts to record labels. You haven't even really dropped an album or played any shows. Sure. And I was incredibly fortunate to be able to, you know, literally go from nothing to, like, being able to go on tour buses because of meeting him. Um, And being a But I'm also, (laughs) like, a living testament to tell you that that doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. And I have a lot of very, very talented more talented than I am, like friends and, and, and other family members and stuff. Um, yet for some strange reason, you know, those people aren't always where they're at. So I think it's just important for artists who do want to be discovered is to put themselves into places to allow them to be discovered. Yeah. And that just, you, you got to start dropping music and you got to start, you know, being as, as uh, public as possible, you know, you got to mm-hmm. exist offline. I think now yeah. a lot more than you, you know, think. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> what about you, Eric? Do you have any I'd advice? Have to go the same as what my dad told me was: if you want to get serious, get on the road. And I didn't even know what that meant. I was like, I was a little kid when he told me that shit. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is a road? But I know now. <laughs> yeah, you've been doing it's it. True, yeah. yeah. So like if you think about it, like you know, um, it's campaigning. You know, back in the day, like, John F. Kennedy, there, there's a picture of, like, Kennedy with, like, a hole in the bottom of his f- shoe Aww. because of, like, he, he would knock door to door and campaign for hours upon hours every single day during his election t- yeah. uh, in the presidency. And to me, that was, like, a very, very good kind of metaphor for the importance of, like, face to face and meeting people. And you could be dropping music all the time like every week dropping new music Fridays and yes. and you know new artwork and new videos but you know like his pop said like if you want to be for real you got to get on the road and it's connected with these people in real life because mm-hmm. yeah. it's all about that real life you know yeah IRL yeah. <laughs> straight up straight up that's that's really good advice we need to start knocking on doors yeah <laughs> hey it doesn't hurt you're either gonna be told yes or no and you'd yeah. be surprised how many people are like yeah, I'm fucking down. That was a good idea. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as you come through with a good idea, I think people are down, you know. It's when you're like, all right, I need you to feature my band <laughs> on your platform. Me, 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 me. And they're like, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring me the back word. 